Welcome to the first week of HI3284, Researching History in Australia. This is the third year history capstone subject, and it's intended to be interesting, sometimes fun, always challenging. It's a subject designed to make you an able researcher and a good historian. Because we live in COVID times, and actually before that, because we live in the age of the digital, the subject does focus quite sharply on digital tools. But I want you to gain through the subject a sense of the wonders of the digital, the opportunities that it offers us from North Queensland, but also a sense of its limits and the danger of trusting to purely digital data. I want you to come out of the subject with a sense of how you can go about finding resources for writing history, what you need to consider when you write history, and also what the limits are for writing history. The subject is running in a combined online, in-person form, well, not in person, online in-person form. Each week, there will be lecture material made available through LearnJCU. There will be video tours of various sites of interest around our region, or even nationally, made available through LearnJCU. And then on Tuesdays, between 10 and 11.30, I want you to be available for the tutorial so we can have a discussion and so we can find out what you think about this material and what issues you're identifying or having engaging with these sources of historical thought. Now, I'm aware that you're third year students. And so while I'm going to mention the resources online, I expect that by this stage, you have actually had a look around the Learn JCU site. You are going to have to continue to look around the Learn JCU site because I am building it around you as the semester progresses. And of course, things like the quizzes are not available to you yet. But make sure you've had a look at that site. As I say, your third years, you'll understand how to use that link to the reading system. And it's essential that you make that work and that you look at the readings each week and keep up with progress in this subject. In addition, of course, each week you have these lecture recordings, which in accordance with best practice, I'm trying to break into reasonably sized chunks. However, in this subject, I've scheduled it that we have one hour of lecture and one and a half hours of workshop. So there aren't going to be too many reasonably sized chunks. Instead, you need to be prepared, do your reading, and come to the workshops ready to look through the material that's there and ready as we move through the semester to lead a tour of a digital archive and to engage in conversation with your classmates. In the welcome video for the subject, I've run through the assessment and the details are also available in the subject outline. In the subject outline, there are what I call recipes and rubrics for each piece of assessment. The recipe tells you what you're expected to produce as clearly as I can manage it. And the rubric shows you how that piece of assessment is going to be marked so that you can look through it and make sure that you do the important things. There should be no mystery about the assessment. Well, some mystery and that of course, the quiz questions are going to pop up at you and you need to respond to them in that limited period of time. And you do need to keep up with the subject. Those weekly quizzes, which constitute 25% of your final grade, those weekly quizzes are designed to encourage you to keep up. I recommend that you review the lecture material, you do the reading for the week, you come to the workshop, and then after the workshop, you take a breather, maybe have a cup of tea. Cups of tea seem to be essential in my approach to history. And then do the quiz well before it closes. The ideas will be fresher in your mind at that point. You might as well get it out of the way for the week. The quiz will, however, be open from shortly after the tutorial on Tuesday until midnight the following Monday. And then they're closed forever, unless you have a really good reason for me to reopen them to you. And like the tutorials, the quizzes start next week. So make sure next week you look inside the assessments folder 
and you spot the quiz which will be waiting for you there. The second assessment item is an interesting one. It is a chance for you to think about what digital repositories, digital archives hold and what they obscure. And so you're leading a tour. I have that list of archives. I suggest that you look through the subject outline, that you look at which archives might interest you and that you line up in week two in the tutorial, you book in for the one which appeals to you. So there's a variable due date for that piece of assessment and you may select your week based on your interest in the particular topic or on your other study or personal commitments. That's fine, but just be aware that it's there. If there's more than one person that wants to lead a tour of a particular archive, you will need to work as a team. And I realize that might be a deciding factor for some of you for which archive you choose. I'm aware that group work can be problematic for people who can't make the commitment at reasonable hours of the day to be available to work on assessment items. I'm also aware that presentations can be an impossible hurdle for some people. If you have difficulties, if you are unable to present in person, be aware that there is an option to pre-record your presentation. And item number three is an interesting one. In this subject, at the end of it, you will have a piece of history published online. And you're in the fortunate position that you are not the first year doing this subject. You can go and look at the Arcadia NQ website and you can see what past students have produced. If you haven't done that yet, again, I strongly encourage you to do that. So by the end of this, you should have a published piece of history, but unfortunately that doesn't qualify you as a professional historian, partly because I won't be paying you for it, but mostly because you need qualifications beyond undergrad to be eligible to join the Professional Historians Association. This is a screenshot of their website, and they do have interesting resources there. If you're interested in history, this is a pathway you can pursue. And in the second part of the lecture, I'll talk about the different types of history writing that occur. So it's worth knowing that this organization exists and I have a great deal of respect for the professional historians. So let's roll through what we're doing. As you can see, this week it's an introduction to the subject. There is no workshop, but there is a reading that you can do. And it's a reading to help you think about why we're drawn to the archives why we're intrigued by them, because archives are something that run through the subject. Next week, we look at who leaves what traces where, and the video tours start. And that video tour stems from 2020 and the arrival of COVID. It was impossible to take students on a personal tour of JCU Library Special Collections because we weren't sure what restrictions would be in place. Instead, Bronwyn McBurney graciously allowed me to go and film her and to talk through some of the items in the collection with her. And so that video tour is available and it gives you great access to JCU Library Special Collections in Townsville. There is a second video next week as well, which is about a particular set of items in Special Collections and how they arrived there. The workshop in week two is very important. Clara Vasca is going to come and help you with finding references. We're also going to look at managing references, and that's the week when you sign up for your video tour. It's also the week that the quizzes start, so you will need to do that reading and to pay attention during the course of the week to get that done on time. In week three, if you haven't discovered Trove yet, well, you're going to find out all about it, even to the point of having a look at the Trove Harvester. And of course, the video tour gets us beyond North Queensland, and I persuaded a colleague of mine to film some of his discoveries in the National Library of Australia. The workshop, as I say, you'll love Trove by the end of this week. In week four, we discuss oral history, and we have the first student presentation that occurs not in the lecture, but in the tutorial. 
it's listed on the lecture side so it's nice and clear and you can see that it's marked in blue. And week four is devoted to oral history, although there's also a video tour for you of City Libraries Townsville. Week five is a little bit different. There is again the lecture to prepare you. That student presentation is going to have to move out of that week because actually in the workshop, we're not meeting even virtually. You're going and having a look at a cemetery so that we can discuss it and discuss what you can learn from visiting these sites. Here we are at week six in the outline, and I feel that you're probably getting tired of me running through it in detail. Your third year students, you'll have looked at the subject outline and you'll have seen what you're in for. You'll notice those workshop topics and I hope that you notice that they are both linked to the lecture topics, but also extremely practical from this point on. That you're talking about things like navigating copyright, which is really important if you're going to produce anything online. You need to know what is available for you to use and what you really shouldn't touch because it's going to get you into trouble. And so that's a theme that continues through this part of the subject. After the mid-semester break, on the home stretch of the subject, we're talking about making history and we're looking at the ways in which history is produced and represented to various audiences, particularly to the public. And so that's where I'm going to wrap up this introduction to the subject. We've got these wonderful topics. We're thinking about the subject in three parts. We start by looking at the collections which represent the traces of the past that we can access. We move to looking at what those traces can tell us about, how we interpret them to try and understand the past. And in the last section, we talk about making history and about how people interact with history because people are passionate about it. I hope we are all passionate about it. And that's the point I'm going to stop. In the second part of this lecture, I'm going to be talking about more theoretical aspects of being a historian. This was very much about getting you started with the subject, and I really hope that you have explored the LearnJCU site and that you are prepared to make a fast start in the subject.